The ancient Celts described this as a thin place, a place where the veil between heaven and earth is lifted, and a place where mere mortals might catch a glimpse of the divine. For centuries, pilgrims have been traveling here, leaving behind their chaotic lives to rest, reflect, and to walk in the footsteps of Columba, the Irish missionary who founded a monastery on Iona in 563 AD. Following a dispute in his home county of Donegal, Columba's exile from his homeland led him here a tiny island off the west coast of Scotland. His missionary work has long been credited with the spread of Christianity throughout the British Isles. That journey, 1,450 years ago, would change the course of history forever. When you think of what it took to come from Ireland and set up a community here. The Reverend Nancy Brantingham is leading a group of pilgrims from the Episcopal Diocese of Minnesota. This is Nancy's first time on the island. As a long-time scholar of Celtic Christianity, this journey is one of major significance. Makes me want to cry. Columba is a great patron for me because he loved writing, um, had gifts for teaching, loved to study, was a good pastor. I hope I am too. So, I think that's why I came. Columba had a role here, situated at the monastery, with his monks, teaching them, and then blessing them and sending them out two by two, and look what happened. Um, and was the world ready to hear? from him and are they ready to hear for, uh, from us yet? I don't know, but numbers certainly aren't the only thing that matter when it comes to getting the word out, if you will, touching people's hearts. This has to be imagined away. One of the highlights of any visit to Iona is connecting with the Iona community, an ecumenical group formed in 1938. Under the leadership of its founder, George MacLeod, the community set out to rebuild parts of the medieval Iona Abbey. Today, the community has a strong commitment to peace and justice issues and offers weekly pilgrimages around the island. The rebuilding of this medieval abbey was to be a symbol of the need for the church to re-engage with ordinary folk and a concern for the need to rebuild community. We'll be going at the pace of the group um, and that's the important thing about pilgrimage. Um, it's, not, it's not a walk taken in our own way, into our own means. Um, it is a walk with each other in the presence of God. On the island, once a week, our guests here and anyone else who stays on the island is invited to join us on a pilgrimage around the island, where we stop at places of historical or spiritual significance and reflect upon that as we walk and talk. Many, many people lost their lives here um, historically trying to protect the island and trying to protect the, the, the monastery particularly. For this pilgrimage, the group is joined by Bishop Kevin Pearson of the Episcopal Diocese of Argyll and the Isles. It helps you journey within, really. Mm 
-hmm. and you express in walking along a road like this, you express what you're trying to do day by day, what I think I'm trying to do day by day in prayer. Mm -hmm. And that actually brings together the spiritual, the, the interior world, and a world that's, that's hard and, and fast. So the actual physical exercise is a part of the spiritual exercise as well. Mm -hmm. and you're drawn into God's life, almost whether you want to go or not. Or not. Perhaps that's a good image of pilgrimage, that, that, that people increasingly are drawn to journey and to, and to make pilgrimages, whether they call them pilgrimages or not, to holy places, to places that for centuries have meant a lot to people. And basically, they're, they're journeying within themselves, they're searching for God. There is something that settles the soul here. It's just very peaceful and nurturing. And I don't think it matters what your your religious or spiritual um, inclination is. I think there's a lot of people who come here aren't necessarily Christian. They just come because there's they feel that nurturing and peacefulness here. There is an energy here that is it's possible to just be loving. It is is truly a, a model in living together with the land and community. The challenge lies in the fact that if you try and imagine what it must be like to live here in the depths of winter, and then you, you, you take that back to, to Columba and his group oh, who had to no you know, make it all and there wasn't yes. an email to be sent and there wasn't no. a, a, a decent boat to get you across even to Mull. I, I think that's where the Celtic spirituality becomes very robust. Mm -hmm. It is about creation, but it's about the glory of creation and the challenge of creation. And the creation. challenge of it, yes. The challenge, constantly Your the challenge. Your own smallness in the, in the midst of it all. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Why, of course, they always lived in, in community, because yeah. that was the only way you could actually survive on what is a beautiful, but could, you can look at it in another way. It can be a very bleak yes. landscape. Surely, yeah. Everyone's been invited to pick up two stones, one representing either something they need to leave behind or something they don't like about themselves, and one to represent something good, something that they do like about themselves. Take the one and toss it into the sea and turn your back on it and leave behind. And the other, take with you. Carry it for a while or forevermore, depending on what you need to remind you that God wants us to be whole. It's no wonder people come here to connect with their inner selves, to seek answers, and to find peace. The ancients knew about the value of pilgrimage as, as a metaphor for life's journey. And I think people today recognize that as a spiritual discipline, which they can use today. As the day draws to a close, the pilgrims are welcomed by Bishop Kevin for Eucharist at the Scottish Episcopal Church's St. Columba's Chapel. The chapel and the adjacent bishop's house have served as a place of prayer and study since 1894. It's a fitting conclusion to the day. Their pilgrimage has led them to the altar to give thanks for the ultimate sacrifice and the new life it brings. Peace and tranquility can be found everywhere on Iona, in the organic gardens that feed the travelers. in the nature, in the ancient stones and monuments, and in the memories of those who've gone before. But most of all, it's found in the community that's formed here today. 
here all their lives and have grown up here. But For many pilgrims, new beginnings and possibilities open up after visiting Iona. In the words of Church of Scotland Minister Peter Miller, we are not alone as our heart seeks God's guidance. The road is filled with pilgrims laughing and crying and sharing stories, seeking the God who surprises us all.